Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris. Today we are finally at peace. I don't know how long this peace will last, but we are at peace. And um, I think today we're going to take um, an attempt at defeating this horrible dragon that's guarding the Rubricator from us. I don't know what it's going to take to defeat this dragon. Uh, Last time I played this game and I defeated one of the Leviathans was a long time ago So I don't really have an idea of the fleet power needed, but I do have a couple things that I think are gonna help um, This is a large a large Beast so I think if we have access to the torpedo technology and we outfit our fleet with lots of torpedoes We're gonna get big damage bonuses against the uh, the dragon um, I think also um, since it's biological, it's not going to have shields, so we don't need any weapons that are effective against shields. So we might th rethink having missiles, because um, I think the whole point of missiles is that they bypass shields, but we don't have any shields that we need to bypass here, so we might want to think about just, like, maxing damage output to hull and armor, maybe? So I don't know. Well, we're going to look at what we can outfit our, sh our ships with. We can see how how much we can get our fleet power up to. Uh, we might exceed our naval capacity a little bit in the process, but uh, we're just gonna take a stab at it. If we take heavy losses, it'll be a tragedy for sure, but we need to we need to fight the dragon to learn what we're dealing with. And until we just take a stab at it, we won't know. We won't know if we're close, if we're really far. I can, I can retreat our, our fleets out of combat if it's going really badly right away. Um, another thing that I think is gonna help is I expect as like a large creature, it's going to have kind of big high hitting weapons. So Corvettes are probably gonna be our best bet against it because it's gonna have a difficult time tracking um, and, and hitting individual fast moving targets. Whereas like bigger ships that are slower moving might be more susceptible to it. Uh, those are my predictions, we'll see. Um, okay, so before we unpause the game, let's um, remind ourselves what's going on here. Um, we just finished uh, the Gruner event chain. We found their their home world, which is a tomb world. Um, and on it, we found uh, the last specimen of the bull species in a vat. Um, and we had a conversation with it um, about how the Gruner completely destroyed their planets and um, how the bull like de-evolved from sapiens back to um, I guess pre-sapiens you would call it. Um, anyways, so we have this planet and now most notably we have the ability to terraform into Gaia worlds. So I think last time we queued up a colony ship so we're gonna go inhabit one of these um, we're gonna go inhabit one of these worlds that has very low habitability for us and we're gonna take the decision to Terraform it into a Gaia world once we've uh, once we've got colonists on on the ground. Um, so that should be good for us. We'll get at least two, three, yeah, three more planets. Oh, maybe no, four if we include this one. Yeah, so that's going to be four more planets to add to our empire, which is going to help us get our economy up and going. Um, for once, we're actually in the positive on all our resources, though just barely for consumer goods. So we're going to continue um, to monitor that closely and making sure we're balancing everything. Okay, um, without further ado, let's unpause the game. And while we're unpaused, let's go ahead and go into fleet management. And let's design some ships that are going to be effective against the space dragon. Alright. Oh, I always forget about these guys. Damn deck collectors. Dear Favarian Republic, once again we're contacting you on behalf of Minamar Specialized Industries regarding an outstanding debt. We only wish to resolve this matter peacefully and hope that it might be will and hope that you might be more willing to participate in a constructive dialogue. Um we aren't willing to pay. We never will be. Bring it on. Spaceport under attack. Okay, let's get our fleet quickly running over to Fevnor to defend. Of course. Um, right, we're gonna go into the ship designer and we can actually design some destroyers. I cannot remember if destroyers can have torpedoes. It looks like not 
So we're gonna have to either make frigates with torpedoes or we're not gonna use torpedoes at all. Um, it would be nice to get um, cruisers because that's where I like to put my torpedoes on our torpedo cruisers. But for now, we might have to do with um, corvettes and frigates. Beautiful bubble. The history of Rovanic 5A has and its lost civilization was uncovered and although tragic, by galactic standards, it was sadly typical. A civilization arose, growing in technological sophistication, if not in political harmony. Eventually, they created the tools of their own destruction and used them. If the fate that fell this world and its denizens was not unique, there was something that was, and it was captured and it captured the imagination of our scientific minds. The ceaseless Aurora Borealis effect dancing unperturbed above all the devastation. Upon closer story, study, the aurora effect in the sky displayed a repeating patterns which defies all previous knowledge of weather systems. Is there some message here? Wow. So, destroyed civilization, um, maybe some message hidden in the aurora. Okay. Chabki Rat. Greetings from New Baldrock. Ah, these are the uh, the aliens we hope to relocate to a new uh, a new gas giant. Things are progressing well here at our new colony. However, we have a small request. Chabki Rod, one of our colonists, misses her family and friends on Baldrock terribly and wants to go home. Her whining is driving us crazy. If it's not too much to ask, do you think you could take her back? Um, okay, we'll entertain these guys. They're the only the aliens who have been nice to us so far, so... As long as they keep being grateful and asking nicely, we're, we're happy to help. Um, okay. So, I think we are going to... I just want to see in technology if we might be close to getting access to cruisers. And I don't think we are. So, we're going to have to deal with what we got. Okay. Construction complete. Mm-hmm. Construction complete. What construction? This construction ship over here. Alright, let's move you into Odaimon. And then we'll go into Sudrama. There's a lot of uh, trade value here that we might um, build a station to collect. I keep getting distracted. Okay. In fact, it might be worth just pausing the game to deal with this so we don't keep getting interrupted. Um, okay, so our Corvettes. Um, I don't know what kind of armor to put on if armor or deflectors is good. Right now I have all armor, which I think is good against like AI. Against the dragon, I'm gonna just go with a safe mix. Yeah, just to play it safe. Um, after like a test fight, we can find out um, if they're doing more damage to our armor or our shields. But for now, we're just gonna keep a safe mix. Um, and I think since we don't need to bypass any shields, we might as well go with our more powerful things that target hull and armor, which are gonna be lasers. Okay, so we can equip three lasers there. Um, and this will be a new class of Corvette. That is going to be our you know what since we're just designing these specifically to hunt the dragon we're gonna call these the hunter class Corvettes because um, I don't think we'll use these outside of um, this this one encounter um, in fact and I think we're going to also equip some torpedoes and I think, again, we're going to go half and half on the armor and shields until we have a better idea of what we need. Um, we're going to use torpedo combat computers here. And we're going to call these... Um, I guess there's only... We only really need one kind of frigate, so we'll just call it a frigate, a frigate class frigate. The ship design does not have enough power. Really? With our fusion reactor? Minus 22 power. Even that's not enough. 
Maybe instead of that, we need a reactor booster. That's unfortunate. I like to have, um... I like to have afterburners, but I guess for the frigate, we're gonna need to... We're gonna need to do that. Okay, so... We have hunter class corvettes, we have frigates, and what are we gonna want to put on our destroyers, if any? Um... Certainly tempted by the large weapon. That might be really good against the dragon. Does it matter for the utility slots? No, I think we can go for the one large weapon that's going to be really good. Um, and then for the ship's stern... I think we'll go for the Interceptor ship stern just because it gives us two utilities. We can put in two afterburners potentially if we have the power for it. Let's test this out. Yes, we made it through with just one extra power. Oh, we're not going to have that one power. Once we uh, equip the weapons, which are going to be lasers. And these are going to be... Um, Gunship class the source. Again, this is just a temporary design that we'll we'll refit once we're done dealing with the dragon. Okay, so we got our gunship class destroyers, our hunter class corvettes, and we've got our frigates. And so let's go to our fleet manager. Um and so let's retrofit the missile class corvettes with hunter class. Um and Let's add some frigates. And let's add some destroyers. Okay, so once we're done dealing with um, MSI, which is currently beating up our poor space station. Once we're done dealing with them, we will go ahead and uh, refit all our ships. And be ready. Um, I'm keeping a lookout for our um, sorry. I'm keeping a, a lookout for our colony ship, which I think is being produced. Okay, in the Fevnor system, because I want to get that going as quickly as possible. Um, we still have unemployment here. Hopefully, that unemployed pop will move to Corium, where we can continue filling more and more industrial jobs. Might be worth building a city here too to get more building slots. Construction complete. Construction complete. All right, our fleet arrived. They've only got two. Yeah, we can take that on easily. Evading hostile fleet. Not today. All right, so they're gonna be back again. That's fine. Let's go ahead and give this crew an order to upgrade. And then we will also go ahead and click the button to reinforce the fleet. The disappointment is heavy. As a company specializing in the enlightenment of less developed civilizations, we pride ourselves in our expertise. Yet it has become abundantly clear that we cannot, uh, that we have failed to impart some basic lessons. Rather than attacking others without cause, you alone must bear the responsibility for your failures. You are clearly in need of additional guidance. Let us teach you how to repay a debt. All right, they're declaring war on us. We'll never bow to you again. War has been declared against us. Wow, where are they? Okay, they're so far away, I don't even think it matters that they declared war on us. That's the one thing about playing in a huge, huge galaxy. Construction complete. Okay. So we're on our way to Jaltham. Um, and once we get to the Jotham system... We can colonize that world. Beautiful bubble. The enigma of the repeating Aurora Borealis patterns was dis explained after the scanners detected small machines in orbit around Ravenic 5A. Some of these devices were intercepted and analyzed. It is established that the machines could manipulate the atmosphere by firing streams of charged particles into it, emulating solar winds. The patterns were basically code ciphers sent to beings on the surface. The theory is that the system was 
in use roughly at the same time as the global crisis took place. Coded communications in a time of war, perhaps instructions to saboteurs or detonation signals for weapons, hidden in plain sight. Without anyone to turn them off, they loop into infinity. Wow. What a tragic end to this civilization. Alright, scientist. We need you to help transport... What's his name? Chabki. Back to uh, Baldrock. Alright, let's build our mining stations here. Okay, and once we've got all of these upgraded, we're going to go ahead and click on the button to reinforce the fleet. And hopefully we will have a full fleet ready for action. Ships upgraded. Okay, we might need some more alloys, but we'll wait for this. Um, we'll wait to gain some more alloys. We're not going to be impatient and buy them right now. Toyobos 3 is virtually fractal. The same wild collisions of natural and obviously artificial geography visible from space are replicated on the personal scale planet side. There are mountainsides with perfect uh, pyramidal bases and jagged craggy summits. Rough tundra that suddenly becomes perfectly smooth plain of bare rock until another weathered natural formation bisects it. The juxtaposition of irregular boulders and rocks scattered among the perfect cubes is the size of a microchip or a half block. As yet, we can only imagine how this could have come to pass. Wow. Keep digging. Let's see what we find out. Let's see what we find out. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and unpause this. We can choose a new engineering research. Civilian fabricators is gonna be really good. Robots would also be Construction good. Construction complete. Robots are so micromanagey though. I I've had a couple playthroughs where I just never bother with robots. Um and those are honestly just better playing. Because you don't have to deal with all the the hassle of refitting your robots and upgrading them. Okay, so let's go ahead and colonize Jaltham. Yes. Uh we're gonna call it something better than Jaltham Prime. Ulton. That sounds great. We're going to call it Ulton, and once we have this uh, colonized, we're going to be able to take a decision Council to turn it into ready. a Gaia world. Council agenda ready. Okay. That's going to give us extra happiness. That's great. And we can go for colony development speed plus 25%. Launch effect. Young colonies get planetary build speed plus 50% for 10 years. I think that's actually going to be really good for us because we are about to colonize a whole bunch of new worlds right now. Um, yeah. And let's also queue up another um, colony ship. Yep. Okay, this construction ship needs orders. Let's go ahead and move him into the drawbar system, we actually have some mining stations and research stations to build there. Alright, robot debris. Upon closer examination, the smashed droids found on the surface of Z13399 appear to originate from two distinct cultures. Technologically, the droids must have been evenly matched when they were still functional, but there are many subtle differences that hint at different design origins. Wow. Different kinds of robots. Different design origins. Wouldn't have thought. All right, so looks like we've had a lot of pops migrate to Corum, which is exactly what we wanted. And now we're at plus 17 consumer goods. So looks like we're doing a good job there. Um, so let's actually keep it up. Research complete. Special Naval project. capacity complete. plus 30. That's great. We're gonna need it. We're really gonna need it to fight this dragon. Um, next thing to get Edicts fun. Yeah, let's get the edicts fun. All right, this science ship needs orders. Did we finish transporting the guy? Okay. Um, in that case, then go ahead and survey Gruner.
<coughs> Excuse me. I'm not sure if we should just get rid of these raiders. They were nice, like, as a temporary measure during the war, but I don't think if the raiders are going to stand up compared to our actual fleet design. So we might remove them from our fleet and replace them with, say, frigates, for example. Um, death of a great leader. Our great official, Teek Badonag, has passed away at the age of 90 while in service to our empire. The people clamor for a memorial service to honor this leader's contribution to the Favarian Republic. A grand event chain... A grand event will give everyone closure and bolster our ideals. So let's look at our government tab and see who it was. This was our minister of state. Okay, governed our um, our capital world for many, many years. Okay, we're going to choose the egalitarian option. A small commemoration will suffice. Name on the wall. Teek Badonag's name and title are carved on... A towering monument alongside others who have served the Favarian Republic for the good of its population. The respected official will be fondly remembered by the people, paving the way for future generations of leaders. Great. Um, we're going to need to hire on a new official um, to govern our homeworld, I think. Unless this person is governing... No, this person's governing Corum, so we need a new governor for the home world. And let's choose happiness plus 3% would be pretty good. Effects as a counselor. Yeah. I think we're going to go for that. Yeah, happiness plus 3%. Okay. Um, so we're going to go to Fevnor. We're going to go to Favaria. We're going to appoint our minister of state, newly appointed to be the governor of our home sector. It's an important job that needs to be filled. All right, our agri world. We can continue building. I think we're on top of our consumer goods. So we're going to continue building more infrastructure for um, agriculture. Um, right, and we are looking at fleet management. I actually think we are going to disband the raiders. We don't need raiders. I'd rather replace them with frigates. And we're going to reinforce the fleet. Um, all right. No video feed. We bring alarming news, Valdar friends. Contact with our colony on New Baldrak has been lost. They are no longer respond to any of our satellite uh, transmissions and we fear the worst. Perhaps the aliens who bombarded our original homeworld have returned to finish the job. Uh, we would know if they were there. We're, we have control over the system. Please send a ship to investigate. All right. Situation log updated. I mean, I was tempted to click we are not your errand boys because they are kind of treating us like we're errand boys, but um. You know, I think it pays to be nice sometimes. Construction complete. Okay, um, our generator world could use a new generator district. And I think we could build, do we have that capacity grid technology yet? No. Once we research that, we can uh, build that here to improve the efficiency of our generator districts. For the time being, it uh, might be worth building just like in administrative offices. It's nice to have some unity generation on all of our planets. Um, so actually, we're going to need... Um, we're going to need amenities. So actually, let's build a hollow theater. Too angled. The discovery of the first crashed flying machine set us on the right path and led us to the discovery of a multitude of similar crash sites littering the surface of the planet. Without doubt, these strange dead machines have something to do with the mysterious geometrical shapes that dot this world, but the extent of the damage caused by the crash landings from high altitude will make analysis difficult. Okay. Difficult, but not impossible. We will figure it out. All right. Continuing to extend our influence. 
and our borders. Um, okay, we have stockpiled a whole lot of food and a whole lot of minerals. Okay, it looks like our Minister of Defense is actually poised to win this election. So our current Commissary General will be replaced. Okay, interesting. The, pr the leader of our government is going to be an alien. It's not going to be a Valdari. Okay, that's what the people want. Maybe this is, means we're on a path to becoming less xenophobic. Construction Selectively complete. xenophobic. There are some aliens we dislike, but not all aliens. Seems about right. Okay. Ultan is getting there. We're almost fully developed, and then we can uh, take the process of terraforming it. Robot debris. Z13399 does not seem to have simply been a dumping ground for broken droids. It may have served as the actual battlefield where they were destroyed. The many layers of debris suggest a series of very intense battles waged intermittently across the better part of two centuries. Oh my gosh. This is a long war. Exactly why two interstellar powers would commit such vast resources towards waging massive ground war on a small and unremarkable asteroid remains an unanswered question. One that I want to know the answer of. Right, um, we can sell some minerals as well because I really want to buy a whole bunch of new alloys. And with these alloys, Research complete. we're going to reinforce fleet. All right, we have plus 20 edicts fund. Naval capacity plus 30 would be great. More edicts fund would also be great. Fleet command limit, I think, is going to be the best thing for us. Um, I'd rather have one big fleet than several small fleets. Once we get, I think we're going to wait to get this technology to up our command limit to 60. Special and then we are going to actually up our fleet to 60 before we take on the dragon. Special project completed. Our investigation of New Baldurak has revealed nothing out of the ordinary. The satellite the colony used to communicate with their capital is still functional as far as we can tell. All right, so let's ask them what's going on. Maybe they're intentionally ignoring their home. Greetings from the new Baldrock Revolutionary Front. Uh-oh. Revolutionary Front. That explains it. We have thrown off the yoke of oppression and are at last free from the tyranny of Baldrock. We have no quarrel with you, Valdar, as long as you refrain from aiding the Baldrock imperialists in their inevitable attempt to crush our revolution. Wow. Um, yeah. We're not going to get involved in this. They can do what they want. You could help us take the fight to our enemies, however. Would you be willing to deliver one of our commando units to Baldurak? Okay. Before we consider helping you, we want to know what you have planned, because we're friendly with the legitimate government of Baldurak. We don't know about you guys. We want to infiltrate Baldurak with one of our elite commando units. They will then incite a popular uprising against the decadent elite that lords over our people. After the tyrants have been deposed, all Dothnak will at last know who is, what it is to have true freedom. A straightforward plan if there ever was one, Baldar. Yeah, we're not getting involved in your internal dispute. Of course you're not. We wouldn't want the revolution to spread to the oppressed masses in your tyrannical empire. Can't have that. Well, we've done so much for you, but we're not getting involved in your internal politics. We have a good relationship with the government you're fighting. Open council position. Okay, so our minister of defense just got elected as the commissary general. So our previous commissary general can now um, be appointed the minister of defense. Hmm, who do I want? This will give us ship's weapon damage plus 7% as a counselor. I think this person is the better bet. Naval capacity plus 5% and ship weapons damage plus 5% and sublight speed. Yeah. Okay. We have a new colony ship. Let's go ahead and move towards Sysma. Construction complete. 
Favaria can continue growing. Let's, what do we need right now? Let's build some more um, industri industrial districts in another city. Baldurak responds. I speak on behalf of the lawful Dothnok government on Baldurak. Yeah, I think we're in support of this government. We have received a manifesto from the group that seized control of New Baldurak, and boy, what a bunch of hogwash. These brigands and anarchists are a terrible embarrassment to us, Valdar. Will you help us stomp out their little revolution before it spreads here and someone actually gets hurt? General Pothnok has prepared an expeditionary force to retake the colony, but we'll need your help transporting it there. You know what? We're gonna help you. Situation log updated. Okay, so what does the situation log call us to do? We just need a scientist to transport them? All right. Okay, scientists, before you um, survey Gruner, go ahead and go ahead and uh, transport that. We don't want any uh, revolutionary ideas spreading around our own empire. Our agri world could use another agriculture district. Ecosystem takeover. The Gandrian civilization on Zatar 2 has recently started settling a new region of the planet. The local flora and fauna, initially vastly different from what can be found in the settled territory, are being completely taken over by the collective, who is taking a radical but methodical approach to regulating the local ecosystem. Certain animal species are ruthlessly exterminated only to be replaced by others, while invasive vegetals choke um, choke out the life of the indigenous trees. The natives' ecological mastery is remarkable, yet they cannot avoid certain setbacks in areas of unusual climate um, where the introduced life forms cannot survive long. We believe that they shall soon find a way around these obstacles and eventually the whole world will be uniform, presenting optimal conditions for the collective to thrive in. Fascinating. We're not getting involved, right? We believe all pre-FTLs have Colony a right to figure out their own path towards um, technological ascendancy. We don't want to get involved like MSI did. All right. Um, this colony, we can take the decision. Ah, turns the planet into a Gaia world by deploying a gene-tailored planet. Plant life injected with the unique bull ability of organic terraforming. All right, it's going to take 720 days. And in those 720 days, we're going to have 30% habitability, which will suck. But by the end of it, we're going to come out with a Gaia world. To commemorate this, let's build an Octoxlin monument. Okay, how's our fleet looking? It's at full strength, so it's probably just waiting some, for some reinforcements. Yeah, let's actually move this fleet towards Huawei. Research I think this complete. is our dedicated shipyard. All right, visit some researchers plus 20%. That's great. We can get plasma throwers. Um, that wouldn't be a bad thing. Not a huge fan of that, though. Gravitic sensors, that would be pretty good. Research alternatives plus one. Let's go for this, the gravitic sensors. Construction complete. All right, polite request. The insights we have gained into hyperlane technology through our cooperation with the Habnite uh, has been frustratingly slow. It seems that to achieve the mastery of a local hyperlink cluster like they have, we would need to spend thousands of years cataloging hyperfluctuations. We have received a new communication from their chief representative. To be honest, your presence here has been grating, so now that we have taught you what you came for, we need to ask you to leave. Having judged our ways of life are incompatible, we worry that you might covet what we have in the future. So to prevent any feelings of ill will, we wish to offer you one of our worlds. 
We will handle the transportation, don't worry. Ah, yes, I remember. I've seen this event chain before. They're offering us one of their worlds. Um, like it's no like it's no big deal. Like, oh we'll just we'll just give you one of our worlds. Um and um we don't believe in interfering with um with other civilizations. Um, especially fledgling civilizations. So we're not gonna aggressively try and assert our control over them. That's what MSI did to us. We accept, have a good life. Hopefully we can be friends. We need, we need friends, neighbor. Neighborly friends, okay. Research complete. Um, okay. We've got civilian fabricators. We can get rail guns. We can get gas extraction wells. That's probably the best thing for us, gas extraction wells. Corvette hole points and frigate hole points is also pretty good. Now let's get gas extraction wells. Um, okay, so they just put a planet into our home system. Wow, a size 25 Gaia world with a modifier. Titanic life, giant life forms. Society research plus 25%. Wow. Translation software malfunctioned. It appears that a mischievous third party was able to hack into the translation software of our envoy to the Mythfell Order, Dimi Basirum, so that their magnanimous platitudes instead became vicious insults that left none unscathed. At least their archpriestess, who was declared to be a vile bird. Uh oh, somebody's messing with us. Although the malfunction was swiftly uncovered, the Mythfellans were not amused by the incident and have lodged an official complaint. Of, at inappropriate behavior of our envoy man and we're just trying to we're just trying to patch things up and be friends in the future we don't need this how's that going by the way are we any any better hmm they're harming our relations as we're trying to improve them how about the coalition I think things are improving. They're not harming our relations, at least. We can end our ri rivalry with them. I forgot we were still rivaling them. Are we rivaling these guys? No. Are these guys rivaling us? We will rival them back. We're not trying to get better relations with them. How close are we to getting our fleet command limit? Uh, Construction 15 complete. more months? Sooner than we'll know it. All right. Are we upgrading the Ubalon station? Because we should be. Okay, apparently we're not. So Sara can actually be downgraded. Special project complete. Special project completed. Several freighters under escort by the ISS to arm have dropped the cargo canisters carrying Dothnok Expeditionary Force into New Baldurok's atmosphere. Moments after flashes can be seen coming from beneath the gas giant's cloud layer. The fighting appears to have started. We'll wait and see what happens next. I hope we chose the right side. I feel like we want to support the legitimate government, not the revolutionaries. Okay. Um, okay, so we're building a defensive point in Yubalon. complete. And I think we want to upgrade all of our defensive bastions now. Expeditionary force seizes control. General Paul Tanak here, speaking from New Baldurak. Operation Gaseous Fury has come has complete success. All primary objectives have been seized and government control has been restored to all atmospheric sectors. Aside from a few holdouts, most rebel units have surrendered or been routed. Much obligated for support, Valdari. If you'll excuse me, I need to transmit a casualty report to Baldurak. Paltanak out. Okay. I'm glad they were successful. I hope they don't abuse their power. Knowing this game, there's a good chance they will. And they'll make us regret it. Um... Right, we have a new colony ship, so let's actually use that colony ship to colonize Seoul. And since this isn't our home world, we're gonna just call it 
New Favaria. Too angled. Analysis of the crash machinery gave an explanation almost too fantastic to believe. The machines were a swarm of automated cutting beam emitters, flying in low orbit sculpting the land ma mass with powerful lasers. A fragment of data from one of the broken automatons indicates the purpose of the endeavor was purely aesthetic, an art installation on a planetary scale, abandoned for some reason prior to completion. I bet you I know why it was abandoned. That's a really expensive project, man. Imagine a civilization so powerful that it could shape entire worlds according to its whims, and furthermore, it did so purely for art's sake. Wow. So we gained the option for mega art installation and ancient cavitation collapser. Fascinating. This science ship needs orders. Do we have any more archeological sites? We do. Let's move it down into Halito, where there are ruins. Ruins cover Halito 1, but oddly the blast patterns seem to indicate the vast nuclear explosions occurred underneath the surface rather than from atmospheric or orbital bombardment. This warrants further investigation, but it will require an archaeological dig to reveal what happened here. Yep. We will figure it out. Idle leaders. This commander is not doing anything. Right. Our recovered asset is no longer commanded because that person is now our commissary general. So we're going to promote this, this guy to be our new um, commander for that fleet. All right. Construction complete. Great. We're almost done building all our star bases. Let's move this construction ship. Construction complete. Up here, I guess, to the Rebulon system. All right. You continue building over here. Archaeological site finished. Ah, this is the war on the asteroid with all the robots. Our archaeologists have learned that after a long and brilliant war, the two empires inhabiting this corner of the galaxy some 200,000 years ago signed a treaty compelling them to settle all future disputes with arranged and highly regulated combat engagements between robotic armies. That's very progressive. We should do that with our neighbors. Avoid actual civilian casualties. Z13399 was chosen as the site of these battles. The treaty appears to have been upheld for nearly two centuries, preventing the outbreak of armed hostilities on numerous occasions, until one of the empires was caught cheating. Oh, that'll do it. I guess good things can't last too long. Research option gain, ancient micro batteries, macro batteries. Okay. Interesting. All right, this scientist can excavate the site in Waltham. Let's see what this site is. The library, a thick layer of glass and metal covers this otherwise barren planet, perhaps hinting at some sort of cataclysmic event in its past. All right, um, I think this is a good stopping point for our episode. Um, I'm sorry if not a lot happened in this episode. I know we've had an exciting past few episodes with the war going on and everything, but we really just needed this time to get on top of our economy, to continue, you know, researching all these technological sites, expanding our borders. And I think our fleet's nearly almost all the way um, bolstered up to the point where we're gonna take on this dragon. I'm waiting for this technology that's gonna up our fleet command limit to plus 20 so that we can make this fleet a little bit stronger before we head into the system. Um, but yeah, I think we have a strong fleet. We are kind of, uh, we've got shields and armor because we don't really know what to expect, but we do have a lot of lasers which should be effective against the dragon and torpedoes as well which will also be effective against the dragons um so i hope you guys enjoyed watching and please stay tuned for the next episode where we continue to um take care of our empire and i think next episode we will finally get around to actually attacking this dragon um so i'll see you guys next time <laughs>